Namaste, good morning, and welcome to another episode of Ulladu Narpudu. Yes, <laughs> one of our neighbors is perched on the water tank. I'm up here on the roof, it's just before dawn, beautiful morning in South India, and my buddy here in the background, you cannot understand this teaching, really, without understanding <laughs> Arunachala. Arun means red, and Achala means non-moving. And his whole name is Arunachala Shiva. So he's a form of Shiva. And the story is, Brahma and Vishnu were having a, a fight, an argument. Who was the best? So they said, well, only Shiva can resolve this. And so Shiva appeared as a column of fire, deeper than the deepest ocean, higher than the sky. And he said, okay, whichever one of you can find the top or the bottom, then he's the best. So <laughs> Vishnu turned himself into the boar form. And uh, Brahma took his... Uh, swan form. And so the boar began tunneling down, down, and the swan began flying up, up. And they, they went for a long time, a long time. So Brahma was getting tired, flying up and up and up. And finally he saw a flower falling down. And he said, hey flower, how far is it to the top? And the flower said, well, <laughs> I guess flowers in those days could talk. Well, I was offered to the head of Shiva, a garland. And I fell off and I've been falling for 40,000 years. <laughs> and because this is Brahma, it means 40,000 years of the demigods, which is like a thousand years of ours. So, there he goes. Um, Brahma said, hey, look, I tell you what, I'm having a fight with Vishnu. Just go, come with me and uh, tell him that, you know, what, what you just told me, okay? <laughs> so I, kn I know the top because you told me, right? So they went back down. And meanwhile, Vishnu got tired and came back up and they met in the middle again. And Brahma told his story and then Shiva spoke, Brahma, you lie. <laughs> And because of that, Shiva cursed Brahma that he would not get any worship. He would not get any offerings. And even today, there are only three or four temples of Lord Brahma in all of India. I used to live near one of them in Kumbhakona. And there's another one somewhere up in the Himalayas, Nainital or somewhere way out of the way. I forget where the other ones are. But anyway... So the column of fire form of Shiva then made himself into a hill because Parvati prayed, please keep this form and make it confidential so that only your devotees can see and give them the opportunity to go around you, Pradakshina, and worship you by circumambulation. And that way they can get their heart's desires. So Shiva agreed, made himself into this form of this hill, this red hill. And then Parvati circumambulated him and got her wish, which was to be incorporated into his form. And this is how the Aradhaneshwara uh, form of Parvati and Shiva combined came into existence. And I used to live right across the street from the temple where that happened, that commemorates the spot. So really cool. Anyway, <laughs> here we are up on the roof, it's almost dawn. And I've got another verse for you. Here we go. If that first person, the ego, or subject, I, named 
I am the body exists, the second and third persons, the objects you, he, she, it, this, that, and so on, will also exist. If the first person ceases to exist by one scrutinizing the truth of the first person, the second and third persons will also cease to exist, and the state which will then remain, shining as one, that is, as the one real self and not as the unreal three persons, is indeed one's own nature, the real nature or state of self. Self with a capital S. And this is what we're all after. We may realize it or we may not realize it, but what we really want is to become the self with a capital S. Because to become the unreal self with a small s is to introduce complexity. Uh -huh. Suddenly there are all these second persons and third persons. Uh -huh. And all the problems and difficulties of life arise from that. Uh, how many love songs are about you, you did this to me and you did that to me? Uh, all because of you. <laughs> and then there's them, uh, the ubiquitous them, the third person. And of course, th those people are completely out of control. So who knows what they're going to do, and it's probably going to be unpleasant. So here we are in a world of our own creation. And the way we create this world is that we split off from the self, the universal consciousness, as an individual being. And because of that, the whole world of name and form comes into existence. You might say, well, wasn't the world there before you split off? And the answer is no. It wasn't. <laughs> no. Just like at night, when you go to sleep, dreamless sleep, is there any world? No. There's consciousness, or rather awareness. Sorry, thanks. Rather awareness. And that awareness is, ah, I'm sleeping so nicely sleeping so deeply. And then we wake up in the morning, we say, oh man, I had such a good sleep. <laughs> so we remember. How could we remember if we weren't aware? See, consciousness means difference. It means a split between the subject and the object. The subject is the first person. The objects are the second and third persons. So because of this split, all the experiences, perceptions, and especially the suffering of life manifest. And that's the world. Now, there are certain places that have a particular kind of energy that feeds the process of getting free from this split. Arunachala is one of them, and probably the best of them, at least according to my experience. And what is that energy? It's the energy of inquiry into the self. Who am I? And not just who am I as a matter of name and form, but who am I as a reality, as an experience? This is the process that leads to reunification of the self. The subject and object merge back into the original substrate of awareness, objectless, unconditioned, eternal awareness. And that is Shiva. So when he appears in the form of a hill, it creates a magnetic center 
place of extreme energy, extreme consciousness. And this uh, influences us in many subtle ways that are kind of hard to talk about, hard to define because they're so personal. For me, it means the end of chasing ecstasy as an antidote to suffering. If you've been following these series, <laughs> you know that I was really into Nibbana and Samadhi, all different kinds and flavors <laughs> of Samadhi. Why? Because we need joy to counteract the suffering of life. And especially the failure of relationships, the failure of love. This is the greatest suffering because we come into this world with a desire for love. We want to love others. We want others to love us. That's natural. But what happens is because our desires conflict, there's never really a perfect agreement. Huh? The only perfect love is with oneself. This self-love is not narcissism because it's not love of the ego. It's love of the pure awareness underlying the consciousness of uh, ob subject and objects, the world. So what do we really want? Huh? We really want happiness. That's all. And happiness is simply the absence of suffering because our nature is happiness. But when our consciousness or our awareness becomes covered with duality, this split between subject and object, uh, between the first person and the second and third persons, we suffer. Why? Because our original happiness has become covered, covered by name and form, covered by conditioned consciousness covered by desire. So the process of yoga, the process of self-realization is to give up this consciousness, I and mine, me and you and them, and return to the original awareness, the undivided awareness of self. This is called Brahman, Shiva, self-realization, samadhi, yoga, nibbana, the kingdom of heaven, etc., etc., etc. There's so many names for it, but it's really the same thing. So when one experiences this, he thinks, ah, oh, this is it. There's nothing better than this. And really, it's true. There is nothing better than this because there can't be anything as wonderful as our original self, self with a capital S. So please put this advice into practice in your life. And you will immediately begin to feel the relief from the suffering because we are the ones causing the suffering. We are the ones creating the karma that comes back around and bites us. And the only way to let it go is to just give everything to him. Give everything to the self. Give everything to Shiva Arunachala. Om Tat Sat. Om Harihi Om.